Arcade Racing I always enjoy all kinds of arcade racing games. From Mario Kart to Rocket League, I'm always having a great time hitting the virtual world. In this video, I want to present to you my journey of how I developed my very first own arcade racing game, Prototype. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, I would say, the most important part of an arcade racing game is obviously the car physics. Driving the car needs to be fun and feel kinda juicy or otherwise the whole experience wouldn't be very enjoyable. Now, there are a lot of different ways to approach this gameplay mechanic and while I did some research for a good solution, I stumbled across this video by Space Dust Studios from 2014. It explains how to implement arcade car physics using the Unreal Engine 4. The main idea is to not have real wheel physics but to have a cuboid hovering above ground due to four directional forces acting as fake wheel suspensions and then just put a 3D model and 3D fake wheels on top of it. So a lot of smoke and mirrors but I would assume that's just how almost all classic and modern arcade racing games are working behind the scenes. Now I don't use the Unreal Engine, I use Unity but physics are physics so I thought this should also work for other game engines. So time to set up a new project and give it a try. For the start I added a floor to the scene and then a test cuboid acting as our car. I applied a rigid body to it and as you can see physics are working like a charm. Here you can see where the spring forces are supposed to push the body in the air and also their max distance. This is important since without a max distance the car would always act as grounded and just be pushed into the sky. Now it was time to add the actual suspension forces. Okay. So hovering above ground did technically work, but it also didn't behave quite as smoothly as I expected it to. Bruh. After what felt an eternity, I was able to figure out what was wrong and I'm not gonna lie, I felt a bit stupid. All I had to do was to add some drag or air friction to my widget body and ta-da, bouncing and juggling around was a problem of the past. Now it was time to add some input forces and give our car a first test drive. Room room. Works like a charm and I must say I was a bit surprised how good it already felt. Of course the car was drifting all over the place, a problem I still had to solve, but even without an actual 3D car model it somewhat felt like a driving game mechanic. But now I was curious how it would feel with an actual 3D car. So I jumped into Blender and started modeling. This was also a first for me since I never tried to model a car before but with some references and a lot of time I was able to create something that looked like a pickup truck which would also have a lot of suspension. I think at this point I feel the need to disclaim that I don't actually know a lot or even anything about real life cars. All I did while working on this prototype was based on a very abstract idea of cars and arcade game references. So I took the car model put it into Unity and made sure that the wheels were always touching the ground if the vehicle is grounded. To see the actual car in action was a very exciting moment since just replacing the cuboid with the 3D model made such a big difference and it instantly really felt like I'm controlling a car. I also added a transition effect to see what I'm actually controlling just for the fun. Now I wanted to tackle the drifting issue in a way that the car is not constantly drifting around like there's no friction at all but so that I can enable drifting via a button. But to do that let's talk a second about what drifting actually is or what I call drifting in the context of this game. So drifting happens when the car's velocity or the actual car movement direction differs from the car's forward direction. So the car moves into this direction but it looks into this one. Now the more those two directions differ from each other the more the car is actually drifting. I added some visualization for that here so you can see what I mean. Now how do we stop the car from drifting? Easy, by just adding a counter force which forces our car body into the direction it looks. And by the amount of counter force we're adding we can actually define how much drift we want to allow. Awesome! So I dedicated a button on my controller to go into drift mode and here you can see how it works. Like I said I don't know much about cars but I'm pretty sure that's what drifting is. Now I was quite happy with my little Akkad racing car controller but I thought that I should at least build some kind of racetrack and add some basic time trial mechanics before I can present this little project to all you lovely people. To keep it somewhat simple I decided to build a track out of cubes using the unity grid map feature and to keep it at least somewhat interesting and make the game somewhat special I made it so that only the blocks close to the car are visible. So to become really good at the track you have to train and remember every curve on the way. 
Now, I also wanted to add some more polishing. By using Unity's trail renderer, I was able to add some very basic skid marks for drifting to the game, which made for some interesting behavior at least. Bruh. I then also added some flamish particles for the engine and dust particles using Unity's particle system. All that was left for a minimum product was to finish the track, add some ramps, sounds, a very basic time trial record system and there we go. It's a game. So, it's obviously super super basic, but that's okay, since all I really wanted was to develop a functional physics-based arcade racing controller, and I totally did that. And maybe I'll elaborate on this project in the future and try to add multiplayer or other neat features. If you would like to see that, please let me know in the comments. And if you really want to try this game, you can find a link in the description. Oh, and for all of you waiting for the next ExoColony devlog, I'll now start working on it. I did not give up on it, but like I said at the end of last year, I do want and I need to work on other games like this from time to time, because otherwise I would burn out on ExoColony and would lose the fun of doing games as a hobby in my free time and of course keeping this YouTube channel alive. So be prepared for more videos like this. We will see each other soon in another video on this channel. Until then, have a good time and goodbye!